Hello, and welcome to Nextstar's video series on the Salesforce Developer Workbooks. In this track, we'll be walking you through the Visual Force Workbook. This video covers Tutorial 13, Creating and Using Custom Controllers. In previous tutorials, we've talked about how Visual Force supports a model view controller style of user interface creation. Controllers typically retrieve data for a Visual Force page or execute some code in response to page actions, such as a command button to save or update a record. Up until this point in our tutorials, we've only been working with the standard controllers. In this tutorial, we're going to use some Apex code and show you how to create custom controllers to work with your Visual Force page. So before we jump into writing the code for our custom controller, we're going to create a Visual Force page to start with that's going to reference our controller. So we're going to call our new page account with contacts. Let's go ahead and click create. And down here in the page editor, we're going to edit the page contents and make it look like this. So our new page is using a controller called My Controller, and it contains a form and a data list inside the form. And the value associated with the list is a piece of Apex code that says My Accounts. And then each field in the form is populated by the name of the ACCT variable provided by my accounts. So kind of a simple visual force page, but it's using some stuff we've never seen before, like this my accounts uh, Apex code. So go ahead and save it. Now, here we go. Visual force is telling us that the my controller controller does not exist, and it's giving us some options of how to proceed. Now we're going to go ahead and click this, create Apex class public class my controller. And now you'll see a new tab here. Um, okay, now that we've got our my controller, the page editor is updated to show us what the next error we have is now. We're going to go ahead and click create Apex method my controller dot get my accounts. All right, and now we've reached a point where the page editor doesn't really know what step to take next. So let's jump back over here, see what it's made for us. So let's just go back and take another look at what just happened. So I created a new Visual Force page, and I referenced a controller that didn't exist, and I also called my account, which is a piece of Apex code that's referencing something that also doesn't exist. So I saved it, and the page editor immediately started trying to help me walk through what my problems were. The first thing it said was, hey, you don't have a controller called my controller, and allowed me to create one, which I did. And then it also told me that there's no method, you know, my accounts, there's no get my accounts method, so I don't know where to get this information from. And I said to go ahead and create that as well. Um, so now we're now over here, we've got a, a brand new controller with a get my accounts method. And now this is basically everything, this is a good starting point for creating our custom controller. So from these first couple steps, you can see how powerful the page editor is and how it really tries to help you solve some, some of the simple problems uh, that you'll run into when creating your own projects. Um, but now we're gonna have to kind of add some logic to this get my accounts method. And we're gonna do that like this. Okay, so what's happening here is we've edited the get my accounts method to actually perform some logic. What this does is this returns the ID, the name, and account number from all the account records in the account table and orders them by last modified date. And it takes all that data as a, as a limit of 10 and it returns them as a list. So executing this method will give us a list of 
at most 10 account IDs, names, and account numbers from the account table in our force.com environment. So let me go ahead and save that. Now our new Visual Force page is using our custom controller to show us the 10 most recently modified accounts in our force.com environment. And it's arranging that in a data list like we can see right here. Now that's only the first piece. We're gonna go ahead and add some action methods to the controller to get the rest of this data to show up the way we expect it to. So we're gonna go back over to the My Controller code and add a few things. First thing we're going to do is add some public variable or some public objects here. We're going to add an ID and a list of contacts. And they both have get and set methods, which is what's denoted right here. And now we're going to go ahead and tie that into our Visual Force page right here. Now what I've just done on our Visual Force page is I've added an output panel that leverages this contacts information list that I just added as part of the controller. So this new panel, which I've given it an ID called contact detail, this output panel will contain the first and last names of each contact associated with a given account. Now this contact information object will need to be populated with information. So when I go ahead and click Save, we won't see anything just yet. All right, so go ahead and click Save. Page looks about the same, but that's because right now there's no information in here. So let's go and add, add this to my controller. So what I've done here is under my controller, I've added a method called account clicked. And what this method does is it populates contacts information with the first name and last name from the contact table where account ID is equal to the select account. So this method here is gonna populate this new object we created with all the first and last names of all the contacts for the given account. So let's go ahead and save that. Now we've added the logic to our controller. Now we're gonna switch back over to our Visual Force page and actually put that logic to use. And how we're gonna do that is we're gonna change this right here. We're gonna change the actual line where it, it prints out the name of all our accounts and we're gonna make those into links like this. So this, this right here, it's still gonna print the, the output text, it's still gonna print the account name, but what we've done is we've made them into links, we've tied the action of the links to that account click method that we just created. So when they're clicked, this is gonna be called and we're, send, we're setting uh, a parameter to the command link. We're setting ID to, uh, we're setting it to a value of ACCT ID. We're assigning it to this. So what this does is this line right here, this ensures that the ID of the currently clicked account gets passed through to the account click method right here and so that it's accessible here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and save this and illustrate that for you. Oh, I almost forgot the last thing that it does uh, that I didn't mention is in the command link line right here, we're telling it to re-render the contact detail part of the page down here. So now we've saved it. All the account names in this list are now links. And now when I click on one, it'll give me the list of all the contacts with their first and last names right down here below in this output panel. So let's go ahead and click another one. And as I go down the list, you'll see with each click, it's, re it's repopulating the contacts information list and then re-rendering the contact detail output panel 
so that the information is updated every time I click one of these links. Now just to kind of review what we've done here today is we've created a new Visual Force page with a new controller and in our new controller it's got a couple of things. It's able to get all the accounts from our force.com environment and well it doesn't get all of them it gets it gets 10 it'll get it'll grab the 10 most recently modified accounts and puts them in a list and then it has the ability to pull the contacts from any one of those accounts and make them available in a list item here this contacts information it also allows us to have a variable to, to contain what account we currently have selected so that's the functions that we've created in our controller. Now we've implemented those functions over here with this Visual Force page. It takes those 10 most recently modified accounts and makes it into a list. And each line item in the list is a link. When clicked, those links call our functions that we wrote over here in our controller to look up the account in our force.com environment look up all the contacts associated with that account, take that information, put it into contacts information, this list, and then re-render this lower part of the page, which will show us the first and last name of every contact associated with that account. So I know we've gone over a lot in this tutorial, but I hope everyone can see the relationship that the controllers have to Visual Force pages and how how controllers can be used to process and make information available, and then how Visual Force pages can then take that information and display them in useful ways. And then the kind of back and forth between the view and the controller to produce the user interface as a whole. So this concludes our walkthrough of the Visual Force workbook. Please be sure to check out some of our other tracks on the Salesforce developer workbooks. Thank you for joining us. For more great content, click to follow us on Google+.